connection is established. To cancel the recording, press star 9. This conference is being recorded. Okay, so welcome to the Super Affiliate Network Freedom Call. Um, and if you just heard my computer talking then, it was saying that the conference has started. So I'm on live and I'm on um, the teleconference that I'm on at the moment, um, talking to my colleagues at the Super Affiliate Network. Um, and we're having a Mindset Monday today. And what I'm going to be talking about is um, why we do what we do. And... Um, really how your why is very, very powerful to giving you a lot of momentum in your business. But firstly, let me say happy Halloween to you all. And um, I did a little bit of research on Halloween and its roots. And I just wanted to touch on this because I thought it was really interesting and something you could take away with you today. Um, I mean, it was actually the pagans that um, introduced um, Samain um, as it's spelled, but it's actually pronounced Sarwin. And um, they, it's actually the end of the pagan year, Halloween. Um, it's obviously where nights are longer and uh, days are shorter. So, that you know, we've got longer days than nights. And um, the pagans used to use this time to actually reflect on their year and see how much they've grown. And um, they'd actually review it and then they'd take the things that haven't served them. And this is where the bonfire comes in. But they would create um, something that was symbolic of that thing that didn't serve them and uh, put it on the bonfire so that they moved forward through their life without that negative thing, whatever it was. And they'd reflect on, on how much they've grown that year and um, how much progress they've made. And I thought that was a really nice thing. And I, I wanted to share that today because obviously being Halloween, it's got some kind of dark connotations, but I thought that was lovely. And um, I would encourage you all to look at how much you've grown over this last year and get rid of all those negative things that have been holding you back and um, move forward, you know, purge yourself with your mental bonfire, get rid of those things. So, right, uh, moving on swiftly. Um, why do we do what we do? And um, why it's really important to, to get down and find what that why is. Um, it's not always that obvious, believe it or not, um, because we have different layers. It's a bit like an onion. And I thought I'd tell you a little bit about my story and how this actually is quite important to me. It's quite dear to my heart in a way, because I remember when I kind of started on this journey of wanting to do something more with my life. Um, it's now I look back in hindsight, I realized I had this really, this real core um, desire um, inside of me that I just, I knew I had more to give and I didn't know how to channel it, but I just knew I had more. And it was at a time where I was feeling quite depressed, but I, I didn't know how to, how to channel that feeling of, of wanting to give more, do more. Um, and just this kind of general feeling of greatness that I think we all have inside us if, if we dig deep enough. But anyway, so I started listening to podcasts and I started kind of this growth journey. And, um, and I kind of lost that why a little bit, because as you start on this journey, you realise out there, there's hundreds of opportunities open to you. And the particular one I decided to go with was was in the online marketing world and it was learning how to become an online marketer and all those sorts of things. And then when I started looking um, at this, you know, that, that, core, um, that core why kind of disappeared a little bit. And you start thinking about, oh, wow, I can make a lot of money. I can, I can pay off my debt. I can, you know, I could get myself a nice car and, and, and housing. I'm not going to lie, I've got my vision board right above me here. And I've got a picture of an Aston Martin DB9. OK, <laughs> so, um, you know, I still have those desires, but they are very surface level desires. And they're not your true why. Because, you know, once you've got all the money, once you're able to buy those things, um, you, you, you're then going to be a bit lost. Um, now we come down to sort of more of a core level, the second sort of level of desire, if you like. And, um, you know, for a lot of people, it's it's having that freedom. Yeah, that freedom of choice, the fact that you're not beholden to a nine to five job, the fact that you can just get up and do something that you want to do when you want to do it and it's all in your own terms it's living life in your own terms and I thought to myself I thought yeah that's a true core desire that's you know everybody wants this and it's true everybody does want this and it is something that obviously 
that surface level desire of money and wealth that that actually buys you that that freedom you know ultimately that's what we all want we want this freedom and uh, then I thought about it a bit more I thought actually do you know it's 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 more than that it goes deeper than that and um, when I think about it, you know, I mean, I, I love the freedom because uh, I do have that. I mean, I'm not a millionaire by any stretch of the imagination yet, <laughs> but I do have that freedom of choice at the moment because I don't work in a job. If my kids are ill, I don't have a boss that I have to, you know, call in to work with. Um, so I have that freedom to take the um, time I need to do the things I need to do. But I still do work on my business quite a few hours a week. Um, but then I thought, well, you know, if I had a lot of money, I'd want to help people. Um, I'd want to, you know, I'd want to make sure my kids got the best education and have great experiences. I'd want to see my parents really enjoying their retirement and really having, you know, um, being able to relax, not having to worry about anything, go off on cruises, do what they want to do. I thought, yes, that's it. You know, I, I can really help those people. And, and, you know, I can give money to charitable causes. And, and that's really great. I mean, that's, you know, fantastic. And that's a sort of a deeper, even deeper level desire. But then I thought, do you know, it goes even deeper than that. And it's actually, I think your deepest why is finding your purpose. And I think you go on this journey, you know, and, and it's something you, you don't know what it is necessarily to begin with. Some people are very gifted. They, they know their purpose. They know their vocation. Quite often people like doctors and teachers from a very young age that is very ingrained in them that they know that's what they want to do. And they follow it with their heart and they, you know, they, they become these great doctors and great teachers um you know I, I i knew a lot of a lot of fantastic teachers because uh, i did used to work at a school and i know many of those teachers are driven by their passion for what they do for for educating the next generation but not everybody has that not everybody knows what their why is um i certainly didn't and when I look back to what I said initially, you know, I just I knew I had this feeling of greatness, something else I wanted to give. And I think everybody has that inside of them, but it's kind of identifying what exactly that why is. And that is the most powerful thing. It's finding your purpose. And generally, it's some way of being of value. It's um, and it's a real emotional. It's a deep emotional why and when you can be of value and you can give to other people in a way that makes their lives better then you find this real deep um drive that 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 is it's more powerful than money it's more powerful than that wealth and um you know and and i mean it's alongside with that, that helping people as well but it, it's just more than that it's more than just you know having wealth to give away it's actually being able to contribute um and it's a real deep level desire and uh you know that's what i was saying and and sorry <laughs> i lost my words there a bit because i'm now moving on to really once you connect with that um your why will then help you build a better make you better quality of decision as you move forward through your life it's actually one of my favorite phrases it's from tony robbins and um it's in the moments of decision your destiny is created in the moments of your decision, your destiny is created. Now, I think if you're making really, really good quality decisions all the time based on your why, then your life is really going to unfold in quite a beautiful way. I mean, have you ever made a decision that's ever just completely changed your life? And at the surface level, you might not have even realised quite the power of those decisions. Um, for example, you know, I moved from London to Wiltshire over 10 years ago and I met my husband. That would never have happened. And then you have those um, decisions that, you know, you, you make fully consciously that you know what the hopeful outcome is going to be. And things like having children, you know, you make that decision. I mean, the decision I made, we had a big struggle to have children, but we did get there in the end. And of course, children change your life in a huge, huge way. And, you know, you have a deep why. You want those children. There, There's a real deep purpose of wanting to give more to the world and, and contributing, but by bringing up decent human beings as well. So, you know, having, and that's hard work, very, very hard work. And I, I put my hands up to that because I have two beautiful little boys, but oh my goodness, it's hard work. <laughs> um, so, you know, there are times when you make 
bad decisions and that can impact on your life but quite often uh, and I can say this from experience as well I, I've looked back and I can look back at some of the really awful decisions I've made but you can kind of see you've been on a journey and sometimes the outcome of that decision um, manifests in quite a good way but you know the most powerful decision you can make is what you decide to focus on and this is coming back to your why again um, because you can either focus on things like good or bad, you can focus on lack or abundance, you can focus on, um, and this is actually another Tony Robbins thing I'm coming back to here, resources or resourcefulness. Now um, someone who perhaps focuses on lack is always going to focus on resources, resources is money, it's time, I've got my list over here, um, technology, contacts, experience, they're all resources um, and someone who has that uh, focuses on the lack side of things would say, you know, their decision is, ah, oh, I can't do this, I haven't got enough money, I um, don't have the time, uh, I don't have the experience, you know, the list could go on. But usually um, people who focus on the um, abundance, they, they look at their resourcefulness and that's your creativity, your determination, your love, your curiosity and your passion and your resolve. And um, if you focus on those, you're going to be more likely to be driven forward and use those in conjunction with your why. And you're going to be pretty much a powerhouse um, to, to contend with. <clears throat> Um, we basically have um, six human needs and again I love Tony Robbins so you're going to hear me quote him quite a lot. Um, there are six uh, basic human needs according to Tony Robbins and the first one is certainty and um, with certainty it's comfortable, you know what's going to happen, a, if you do A and B you're going to get the result C but the problem with certainty is it's boring. So. The second human need is uncertainty. We all love surprises, right? Well, not all of them. <laughs> so the second human need is uncertainty. It's actually that need to be surprised and to not know what's going to happen um, to make, um, I suppose, life more interesting. The third human need is significance. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's the way um, to feel significant to someone and um, Tony Robbins actually describes that this is why we have violence in our world and he gave the example that if, if you point a gun to somebody's head on a naught, scale of uh, naught to ten uh, you become pretty much a ten in terms of significance uh, to that person. So um, you know he, he actually says until we get this consciousness shift um, there's probably always going to be that violence because people want that level of significance. Um, and then the fourth one is love and connection. I mean, that's just, you know, that's a beautiful one. Yes, we all desire love and connection. And um, these are all uh, what he calls the needs of the personality. They're the four needs of the personality. And then he goes further with two spiritual needs. And um, this is, you know, it, number five is growth. Um, that actually, if you don't grow, you stagnate. Um, and I think this was where I was at when I started um, on the journey. I was, I was depressed because I'd stopped growing, I wasn't contributing, um, I wasn't really giving anything and um, so therefore growth um, is an incredibly important uh, need on a spiritual level because you need to grow, you have to grow as a human being otherwise you will stagnate, you will get depressed. Um, and the sixth one is to contribute beyond ourselves and it's that thing of giving value, of giving to other people. Um, so here you can see how those needs um, intertwine with your why. Um, so you've got your sort of your surface level needs but you've also got the two spiritual needs which are really important of growth and contribution. And when I um, heard this, it's actually in one of um, the TED Talks. If you, if you um, search for Tony Robbins in the TED Talks, you will find him talking about this. And I found it absolutely fascinating because I know those last two, growth and contribution, were absolutely um, key to fi me finding my why. So I'd like to challenge you today to, um, to actually really dig deep and, and think about, you know, 
work it through. You've got your surface level desires, you've got those ones that are kind of in the middle, you know, but if you can get to your purpose, if you can find that core level desire, you're always, always going to be driven forward and um, you're gonna, you know, and the thing is once you can connect to your why, you can then start to appreciate other people's whys. And this will help you, especially if you're in business, this is going to help you with your communication with other people. It's going to help you with that connection with other people. And, you know, um, it's going to help you in your marketing. So when you're doing an email or writing a blog post, then if you can connect to what other people's deep desires are, what their real whys are, you're going to be able to speak to them on a completely different level, you know, way beyond money and that sort of thing. So... That's it from me. I hope it was 15. Oh, wow. 15 minutes. Bang on the dot. That's not bad going. Now, I'm just going to unmute my conference. So if you just bear with me a second and I'm going to talk to some of the, you guys on live as well. So um, has been unmuted. there we go. So have I got anybody else on the call or is it just you, Ray? <laughs> I'm still here. Hey, we've still got Ray Stender. He's on the call with me. Um, but on live... Who have I got? I've got loads. I've got quite a few of you. So I'm just going to say hello to you as well. So we've got Julia. We've got Alice. Oh, Alice, I'm glad you can make it. Natasha, Bijal, Leonard, Stacey, Haji. Is that, I hope I pronounced that right. Rob, Leonard, yep. Um, Carlos, Grace, Ben. <laughs> oh, thanks, Ben. You love my message. Tom Jackson. Hey, Tom. I hope you're still there. Derek Simpson, Sean. Happy Monday, indeed. Um, Teresa, yeah, um, Carlos says, I think we all have the why in the beginning. Um, and Sean says, in fact, that's my why, to have happy Mondays. Bijal says, very inspirational, thank you. And Amanda, lovely to see you as well. And Werner, thank you. And he says, thank you for the deep um, inspiration. And Rex has joined us as well. And Ray's joined on live. I've got Ray in two places. Amazing. Stacey, thank you. Have it, has anybody got any questions or anything? Nope, I don't think so. So I'm going to end the call, end the recording. So just bear with me and um, I'll, I'll stay on live for a minute. So um, if anybody wants to have a chat with me afterwards, I will. But I'm just going to end this conference call. So just bear with me. To stop the conference recording, press one. To keep... There we go. This conference is no longer being recorded. That's it. We're all done. So it's just me on live. So thank you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, and it was it was great. Uh, what does the call in number cost for UK peeps? What the um, I actually do it on Skype, Sean, and it's cost me about eight p. <laughs> So I've been on for nearly half an hour. It's cost me about eight pence to do the call. So to join in, I'd recommend doing it on Skype, actually. It's it's easier than on the phone. You can hear better. And um, obviously I'm hands free, which is which is great as well. So, um, yeah, thank you guys for joining me. Um, I hope you got a lot of value out of that. And um, I will see you next Monday. But I'll probably be doing a live on something else before then. So thanks again for joining me. Take care. Bye bye.